Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and hey look, it's a short week with Jack Harlow, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. This is the sort of week where it feels like there should be a bit more going on than there is. Given the short notice and relative lack of promo, I'm not really that surprised that we didn't get a Jack Harlow album bomb, but it is the relative lack of other activity that's got me a bit perturbed, especially given that I don't really see Ed Sheeran making a greater impact next week. Now, whether or not his label might have been even trying to bomb the charts, well, okay, going less commercial doesn't seem like it's working for anyone, even if the music might be better. But hell, I would argue that this slowdown is more than just there. Look at our top 10, where Last Night by Morgan Wallen once again squats at number one. While it might not dominate streaming at the very top, its margin there is so good that along with major airplay gains, I'm not sure what can really challenge it. Yeah, Kill Bill by SZA holds at number two, but it lags on streaming. Radio's in free fall. I think it had its moment and now it's just over. I say something similar for Flowers by Miley Cyrus at number three. Streaming is slipping, radio peaked, the only question will be how fast it falls off. That opens up the door for Ella Bella Sola by Esla Bon Armado and Pesa Pluma at number four. It rules streaming, it's now got sales traction. I think the lack of radio will prevent it from getting that top spot, but it is making moves. Similar case for Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez up to number five, where the radio growth is still strong and streaming seems to be finally shifting into gear, tracking momentum will be really key here. And hell, while radio was unstable for Creepin' by Metro Boom and 21 Savage in the weekend at number 6, it still had enough of it that it actually picked up a spot here. Now that might actually be because Un Por Ciento by Bad Bunny and Grupo Frontera slid down to number 7. To me, it's kind of marginal because the streaming is solid, but the radio is just not moving up very quickly. And even with the Bad Bunny cosign... I kind of get why. It was enough to hold over Die For You by The Weeknd at number 8. Definitely on its way out here on the radio, even with the remix with Ariana Grande. Boys a Liar Part 2 by Pink Panther and Ice Spice is at number 9, where radio momentum is stalling out about as fast as it's streaming. And Antihero by Taylor Swift held at number 10, which had a bizarrely stable week on the radio and didn't lose that much to impact the margins. Go figure, more stasis. Now that takes us neatly to our losers and dropouts, of which the only only one that's really worth mentioning is Wait in the Truck by Hardy featuring Lainey Wilson, which easily clinched its year-end list spot for 2023. I mean, there's also All the Girls You Loved Before by Taylor Swift, but let's be real, it's been on the downswing for weeks. It was never really built to last that long. Now, the losers feel a bit scattered, though. I mean, for the natural exit having clinched their year-end position, we've got Escapism by Ray featuring 070 Shake at 40, along with Lavender Haze by Taylor Swift at 45. Peaches by Jack Black slid down to 82 as the meme appears to finally die off. Double Fantasy by The Weeknd featuring Future fell off the debut to 35. And Dawns by Zach Bryan featuring Maggie Rogers is just barely hanging on at 100. The one that actually surprised me a bit here is Bloody Mary by Lady Gaga down to 84. I'm more shocked that it lasted so long just beneath my radar, peaking just below the top 40. And if it gets extremely lucky, might just barely scrape into the bottom of the the year-end list, that's kinda wild. Now for the returns and gains, they are also just as scattered, but bizarrely I found a bit more that I like. No, I'm not really pleased that Private Landing by Don Tolliver featuring Justin Bieber and Future is back at 99, but I'm not really going to complain that BZRP Music Sessions Volume 53 by Bizarre Rap and Shakira is back at 98, as in both cases I don't expect them to really last. But I find the gains a lot more interesting, where the only one I really don't like is El Gordo Tre El Mando by Chino Pacas at 61. The rest... Well, okay, Memory Lane by Old Dominion at 75, and It Matters to Her by Scotty McCreary at 73. They're more forgettable than good. I See You by Coco Jones at least has some promise in R&B up to 63. And Human by Cody Johnson is finally getting the proper push at 62. Took them long enough. But the big stories are Karma by Taylor Swift spiking nicely to 52. The second it gets a video, it's going to be real big. And the biggest surprise with Cupid by 50-50 up to 19. I mean, whatever formula that they have to make this work in the American market, it clearly is connecting. It's one of the few K-pop songs that have charted recently that I really like. I mean, you can chuck a lot of the gains up to streaming, but it's also got a bit of radio. I'm really curious how much of a run this can make. 
I'm on board. But that takes us to our rather shockingly limited list of new arrivals. Let's start off with number 96, Common Ground by Jack Harlow. No cap, put rags on it. The dialect got a little splash of some black on it. Cap and gowns bought by the money in dad's pockets. White girl squatting, trying to get that popping. Caught back talking to their mom and dad's often. Okay, you ever hear a point getting made that is probably on the money, maybe even cutting, but it's coming from absolutely the wrong source? Uh, yeah, that's this song. It's an explosive way to open up the album with a really great bass line and a good sample loop and the pattering percussion. The production on this track is excellent, even if we only get it for just over 90 seconds. And you know what? It's not even like Jack Harlow is wrong in his discussion of how white America commodifies hip-hop culture while never really having to engage with the harsh reality of black America. To a lot of white folks, it's just entertainment, with probably the most cutting lines being about those who in rap media, now covering the genre and its history, are often overwhelmingly white, middle class, and don't see the streets. Those those are all good observations, and they stop precisely before examining the reality that Jack Harlow's career and industry-driven success is driven off of a lot of that same audience. Hell, isn't he's not from the streets here either. At some points, he probably was in that audience himself. So without that added element of introspection that could challenge his own privilege on a song that can't even make the two-minute mark, it could have had a third verse here, the impact is just really diminished for me. I mean, Eminem made this exact same song 20 years ago called White America, and it was way more cutting and real than this. Now, granted, that's common ground that Jack does want to examine. In the meantime, song's fine. Should be way better. Number 91, People by Libyanka. Oh, past five days. Did you check on me? Now, did you look for me? I walked in the room, my Zarel, and I don't smoke banga. Did you check on me? Did you check on me? Now, did you notice me? So this song's been blowing up worldwide, especially in the UK. I wasn't initially familiar with Libyanka, but she was originally born in Minneapolis. Her parents relocated to Cameroon. She was on The Voice in 2021. And while getting eliminated pretty early, she still got signed. This is her breakout song. And it's actually a really good track, taking a very gentle Afrobeat groove with subtle reverbed R&B melodies that do a lot to center Libyanka's singing and her layered vocals. Perhaps a bit over processed for what this needs to be, but it works in the context where she explores her cyclothymia, a mood disorder that can leave her in deep wells of depression that she's been trying to mask, where folks mistake her reddened eyes for smoking weed and just not crying, made all the sadder by the fact that she'll then question God why she's got to have to go through all this and then put up a facade of strength. So it's a very understated, very sad song, but I also think the hook really works. I really like how the vocals are layered. I think this is a really promising breakthrough. I mean, kind of sad she had to go there to make this, but this works. Great stuff. Number 88, Waffle House by the Jonas Brothers. Look, I know I was done with the Jonas Brothers comeback earlier than most. They were never part of my nostalgia, and a lot of happiness begins really sucked, let's be real, the sort of half-formed commercial cash grab that worked like gangbusters. The problem is that following that on a new album, apparently executive produced by John Bellion, dude, come on, you do not have to keep doing this, just make that next solo album already, and this song was getting a reputation for being really bad very quickly. And... Okay, look, it's not as bad as I was expecting. John Bellion can write a terrific hook. The retro 80s sheen has a bit more body off a solid bass line and some actual vocal harmonies. The sentiment of a frustrated couple finding a moment of respite in the little things like going out, even if Nick Jonas should have absolutely taken the lead for the entire track, Joe Jonas starting is a mistake. But I'm sorry, this sounds like a sanitized chintzy Waffle House commercial for daytime TV that would have dropped in the mid-90s. And you know they would not have named this song Waffle House if they weren't counting on that endorsement check. Now, just because it can be an obscenely catchy commercial 
does not necessarily mean this is a bad song. I mean, it's considerably better than the atrocity that was fancy-like. And you know what? It's not like the Jonas Brothers have ever been overflowing with artistic dignity or integrity to begin with. But I'm sorry, John Bellion is certainly better than this. And that's what triggers this feeling of lingering embarrassment overall. It's not the worst thing I've heard. Hell, I'd say on the hook alone, the Jonas Brothers have certainly pushed plenty worse singles in recent memory. But I know exactly why so many folks really hate this already. And if this catches on, it could get rough. I'll say mediocre at best. Number 69, Wreckage by Nate Smith. I don't have to hide away You see all the wreckage And it wrecks me that you stay not gonna lie, I found out mostly by accident that Nate Smith was releasing his debut album at the end of April. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that he was gonna get a bit of an album rollout or hell, even a second single. But what did surprise me was that the album was 20 songs long and ran for over an hour. That's not even including the deluxe edition, which is precisely the wrong lesson that Nashville apparently is taking from Morgan Wallen. But hey, I found Whiskey On You just utterly forgettable. It didn't really work for me much at all. So maybe the second single could be better and my god it actually really is not gonna lie just on the basis of this i now have a reason to be mildly interested in nate smith because the writing here is excellent tracing the emotional journey of learning to love again post bad or abusive relationship down to a lot of emotionally honest details like getting stuck in one's own head gaslighting oneself relearning how to trust again or just being so emotional in the realization that she actually loves enough to see all the wreckage and stick around and playing in the piano ballad strong with the touches of organ, with just how raw Nate Smith's vocals are, it's a good juxtaposition. Even if there are points that feel a bit oversold, a little clingy, it is really important that the healing process is the centered part of this story. Not gonna lie. There was some real personal emotional resonance for me on this one. And, and while I'm not sure how well it's going to stick longer term, especially given how limited any guitars or a sense of groove feel on the track, it's still really damn good. Not enough for me to check out an album that's so utterly bloated, but I'll take what I can get. Check this out. And finally, number 54, They Don't Love It by Jack Harlow. Fuck shaping my beard up, I'm liking the scruff. And fuck the hills, cause I'm living my life in the cut. Can't imagine that I'm gonna meet my wife in the club. We gonna see though, I feel like she more of a CEO. So can we just get a moratorium on white rappers putting themselves alongside Eminem? Forget however uneven M's catalog is these days. It's just so goddamn corny, especially in the belabored way that Jack Harlow tries to get around saying Eminem's name. Also, let's make this abundantly fucking clear. In the ranks of white rappers, I got a top 10 that doesn't include Jack Harlow and the assertion that they didn't make it because they don't love the art in the same way that he does once again conveniently ignoring his backing from DJ drama and the major industry push for a second chance that the majority of rappers will never get I'm sorry it's myopic and galling and with all the braggadocious flexing and trying to sidestep his cool in order for something that's a little bit more meaningful or traditionally masculine yeah no I don't buy it chill and cool are at the roots of Jack Harlow's underlying appeal. And while I can kind of see the J. Cole formula maybe working with this swerve, it's a tougher sell when I don't even buy into the content. Hell, the majority of the time I don't buy it from Cole either. And yes, while I get that Chipmunk Soul works for a whole swath of my generation, it rarely does for me, so the production doesn't even click. And while the percussion groove has a good bounce off the pianos and the horns, the second those pitched up vocals slipped in, I groan, I roll my eyes. So no, in fact, I really don't love it. In fact, on a short week, it's simple. Easily the worst of the week for me. Yes, it beats out Waffle House. Although that one could get annoying as hell in record time. Now, best of the week... I'm actually going to give it a tie here, both for very pleasant surprises for different reasons. People by Libyanka as the breakthrough that I did not see coming, and Wreckage by Nate Smith as the second single that really struck me. I see the potential now in this guy. Now next week, look, I don't expect the Ed Sheeran album bomb given the label issues, but I've been surprised before. Who knows what we're going to get. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse. I'll see you next time.